Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science 3010 Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences at Utah Valley University. In this video, we're looking at the second practice test for Chapter 5 on z-scores. The first question on this test is, no matter what the shape of a distribution, if it is converted to z-scores, then its standard deviation will be A, the same as the original distribution, B cannot be determined, C, 0, or D, 1. Well, the answer to this one is one. Um, the idea, same as the original distribution, that's true of the shape of the distribution. Standardizing it, converting it all to z-scores doesn't change the shape. Cannot be determined, no, that's not true. We know how standardization works. C is gonna be the answer for the mean. The, the mean becomes zero, but the standard deviation is one. Again, let's take a quick look here. You've got the formula for the z-score here on the left. And what you see is that you take everybody's distance from the mean, doing the x minus um, uh, the x mean, and then you divide it by the standard deviation. And because you divide it by the standard deviation, that, that by necessity makes the new standard deviation 1. And you can see it happening over here in these uh, little box plots on the, these plots of boxes on the right. For the top one, you can see it has a mean of 3 and a standard deviation that goes over to 5, so it's it's a, it's 2. Um, the exact one beneath it, which has been converted to z-scores, you see that the mean is now 0, and the standard deviation line with this little sigma now goes to a score of plus 1. That's So it's a step of one standard deviation, and that's uh, the idea of how it works. Number 2, in a normal distribution, which measure of central tendency has the highest value? The choices are all are the same, or the mean, the median, or the mode. Well, the answer to this one is in a normal distribution, they're all the same. Um, here's my glamorous uh, depiction of it. Uh, we just got a little bell curve here. It says it's normal distribution, and we got a single line right there in the middle. Remember, the mean is the balance point of the distribution. So if you stuck it on a seesaw, this is where the, the middle would be. And you, because it's symmetrical, that's going to be right there in the middle. The median means 50% are above, 50% are below. And again, it's a symmetrical distribution, so that's going to be right there in the middle. And the mode is the high point. It's the, it's the bump, the top of the bump or the hump of the distribution. And in a, in a unimodal distribution like the normal, that's going to be exactly right there. Uh, and in fact, the mean, the median, and the mode are going to be the exact same place for any unimodal symmetrical distribution. It doesn't have to be an exact bell curve but any unimodal symmetrical distribution. And for what it's worth, also the mean and the median will be the same for any symmetrical distribution, even if it has two modes or, or whatever. But for right now, on a normal distribution, all three of those have the same value. All right, number three. If a person has a z-score of plus two, what would their raw score be in a distribution with a mean of 20 and a standard deviation of three? Well, the choices are 26, 2, 23, and 43. And the answer here is 26, and let me show you how we get to that. What you have is, uh, you have to modify the formula that we've used before a little bit. You just flip it around where you're solving for x, and you start with the mean. And to that, you add a certain number of standard deviation units, and that's given by z. So x is equal to the mean plus z times the standard deviation. Remember, because of the order of operations, you do the multiplication first. So we have x is equal to, uh, we have a mean of 20, so we put that in there. The person's z-score was plus 2, so we put that next. And then the standard deviation was 3, so we're going to multiply the z-score times that. So we have x is equal to 20 plus 2 times 3. Uh, again, you do the multiplication first. Um, so we have S, x is equal to 20 plus 6, and that is just equal to 26. And so uh, if the person had a z-score of 2 in this particular distribution, their raw score must have been 26. All right, number four. In most distributions, nearly all, that is more than 99% of the sample scores will be within what range of z-scores? The choices are minus 3 to plus 3, 0 to 1, minus 2 to plus 2, or it cannot be specified without additional information. Well, the answer to this one is minus three to plus three. And I can show you that. Now, uh, let me just say this bottom one. The idea that it cannot be specified without additional information, that's not true because we know um, 
This is true for most distributions and particularly normal distributions when we're dealing with z-scores. And so let's take a quick look here. So here's a normal distribution. And what you can see is that um, if you look at the, the lines and the three numbers across the bottom, you see that about 68% are within one standard deviation above and below. 95% are within two standard deviations above and below. That's why you have the, the two sigma there. And then the last one says about 99.7% go from uh, three above to three below. So that's nearly all of them. Again, if uh, if I were writing this question all by myself, I would have specified normal distribution, but the way that it appears on the departmental final is it simply says most distributions. So please keep that in mind as you're studying and getting ready for the final exam that we'll have at the end of the semester. All right, the last one in the second pretest is what percent of the normal distribution has a z-score of less than one, that is an absolute value of less than one. Again, that, that's what those vertical bars mean, is, is an absolute value, so you ignore the plus or minus. The choices are 1%, 34%, 95%, or 68%. Well, going back to our same thing, it's 68%. Again, let's take a quick look here. A z-score with an absolute value less than one, that means uh, you can go down the left to negative one and up to the right to positive one and anything in between there has an absolute value of less than one. And what you see here is it's 34% on the left, 34% on the right, and together that makes 68%. And that's the answer to the last question in the second practice test for chapter five. I'll see you at the third one.